listen to your word, Lord. We pray that, Lord, that you would do amazing things in us, that you would transform us, you would make us useful in your hands. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to invite our choir and musicians as we sing Amazing Grace.
Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. And welcome back to our Sunday, second Sunday of February, English session. <clears throat> the theological doctrine of the topic of the church is both very important and difficult. The important part, and both important and difficult, is kind of normal to all theological doctrine top and topics. <coughs> but some is more than another. That's important, they're all important. But some topic is very difficult, especially the Church of God. However, by the grace of God, by the amazing grace of God, not only did He save us, but He's feed us, help us to grow in our Christian faith and knowledge of the Word. <clears throat> Therefore, I'm very confident that we will journey through this topic with a great blessing and success at the end, although this is difficult. So, the Church of God today, the topic it is. And the passage that, interestingly, the Lord impressed in my heart is Ephesians chapter 2, 8 through 10. Familiar passage that we all know. This is a passage talking about salvation. Yes, it is. <clears throat> that alone is an amazing grace that God saved us. As you heard the song, and we know the doctrine of our salvation, it is. But by the grace of God, we will see three things today. One, the passage will reveal, obvious, the topic of the salvation. Yeah. It's not quite direct to the topic of the church, but it is related without doubt. There's no, there's no unsaved people or the church of God. There's no church of God contain the real church of God contain unsaved people. There's, therefore, salvation is very important, the life breath of the church of God. <coughs> so three points that we will see in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. The obvious one that you and I know that we are very familiar with. If anything, this is our life verse, and anything, this is the verse that we all, or at least most of us, as all of us should be, understand and read and absorb and grateful for our salvation, our conversion, since beginning and throughout our Christian life, and will be totally, perfectly, perfectly perfect one day when we see Him face to face. So that, number one, Ephesians 2, 8 and I talk about the salvation, the grace that save us, our salvation, our faith, and the grace of God. But it's deeper than that, in which by the grace of God, we shall see the treasure in this passage, which is number two. The three of them, number one, salvation, number two, this passage will reveal to us the character of God, the nature, the essence, not told the total of the nature of God, but enough for us to know Him from this passage, to worship Him, to love Him, to reverence, to fear, to obey, and to guide our life as his children. So point number two, we will see the nature of God, and even the nature and the doctrine of the Trinity in that as well. That's point number two. A little bit deeper than just a surface of the obvious topic and context of salvation. I don't mean lightly surface, mean less important, but it's just easy to the eyes of the reader, to us, Christian or non-Christian, can read this. 
But number three is exciting, exciting, it's amazing and impressive to my humble heart that I see this is like something that I would never seen or have known if God did not graciously reveal it to us and to me. Point number three is a topic of the Church of God. And there's no word church in here. No direct vocabulary or word to say there's a church in here, but it is a church all over. So, three points here. One, the topic, the doctrine of salvation. Two, the topic and the doctrine of the holy God, the triune God. Three, the topic of the church of God. And the Church of God involves subtopics, subpoints, and that as well, including church living, church practice, church life, and evangelism and discipleship, and all of that in here. Pack in three verses. So I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10, and you're hearing. For by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing it is a gift of God not a result of works so that no one may boast verse 10 for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we shall walk in them Simple, <coughs> simple, but beautiful, profound, precious, gold, or the term gold, precious metal that human mankind know. Solid gold, precious, priceless passage. Especially, <clears throat> especially to our sin, damn, cursed soul in nature. You understand that? You understand how precious it is. It is not my precious. When it comes to my precious, is a different connotation. As Token already told us about that concept of golem. Yeah, yeah, golem my precious could mean anything from material to to object material object people to concept and to whatever it when it become my precious it's no longer precious it's a curse it's a curse it need to be thrown in the lake of fire but here this is heavenly precious this passage I read one more time <clears throat> for my <clears throat> personal experience and ongoing throughout my life until one day it's become perfectly whole because the nature of a sin I personally needed you personally needed from beginning of our life throughout and the end it's a song well written Amazing grace that saves sinners like us. We were blind and we see. And then amazing grace, we will have no day to sing God grace, God praise for his amazing grace carries through to the end and beyond and heavenly place throughout eternity. We continue to praise God for his grace. That's how great it is. <clears throat> I first heard this long time ago, as a young sinner, now I'm old sinner, I was blessed. I don't know about you when you read this, you hear this, you understand this, you absorb this. I'm sure you have a certain degree of appreciation and, and, and joy to hear this. If you're not Christian, it's a different story. If you're Christian, it is for sure. Eventually, one way or the other, different degree, but eventually you get to the point of this passage deserved, especially verse eight. I was so blessed. Struggle in life, 
mean, not that I'm better than before. It's just because the grace of God carried me through. But back then, imagine without the grace and the salvation, without God, without the faith, I was totally double dead, double blind, double darkness, double sin, double everything. One sin is good enough to kill me, to destroy me, to send me to hell, but I had two. One, sin by nature, two, sin by soul that was not saved by the grace of God. And then, by the grace of God, one time in my life, in early, I don't know how many times that I heard this, but one point of my life, I heard this in the early 80s. The verse, the blessing, the contact jumped at me almost violently, forcefully yanked me out of my darkness and sin and trap and damnation. That was so drastic. For by grace, let me personalize this, if God so gracious to let me, I want to personalize this. And you know this is a you, all of us. For by grace I have been saved through faith. And this is not my own doing, it is a gift of God. Not a result of work so that I and anyone may boast. For I am, we are, all Christian, his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that I, we, all of us Christian, should walk in them. This is the gift, precious gift, love gift from God to me, to you, to us, to Christian, all ages throughout history, throughout eternity. This is the gift from God to us, both context, both passage, both result, reality, and all of us. Amazing grace. So we as we see this, point number one, as I mentioned, and we have three, let me read this, let me go through this real quick, salvation nature of God and which result of our praise and relationship and closeness to God and thirdly the doctrine of the church of God so we will see all of this this is today's overview and we'll go through those points sub point in detail later because it's involved a lot in here the English language and the Cambodian too try their best to try to explain the context in this passage, this doctrine, quite well. But the Greek even better. And I'm not a Greek scholar by any stretch of imagination. Far from that. Far from that. By trade, by experience, by formal training, it's nothing but I'm learning from the giant and a scholar, theologian that invest, that sacrificed our life throughout history that we all can receive. But nothing, nothing close to scripture itself and the Holy Spirit in us. Not discount the help of the theologian and scholar. They help us, they help me tremendously. But as you get closer to God, in faith, in prayer, in humility, in repentance, in sincerity of heart, you see something a lot deeper in which I am so blessed and so joyful to share this with you. We all, at least in this context, are Christian, are people who go to church. And that's special, relate to this, very special. As the present, talking about timelines, the present is the focal point of the past and future. So as God is the focal point of anything exists, whether 
visible and invisible, he is the center, the creator, the, the all in him and everything for him and for his glory, for the present and eternal past, eternal future. In that passage, this doctrine is the same, especially carrying those three points. It's, this is a great topic beyond human imagination and ability to absorb everything completely. However, God gave it to us. And the great part of it, it's in verse topic number point, sub point number three in the church of God. I understand the grace of God saves us amazingly. I understand, not that I do understand, I understand that's a great thing to understand the nature of God, how He who He is and how He is and how He's kind, how gracious and how great is nothing small. But when it get to the church of God, when it get to relate to us human involved with his supreme masterpiece, divine work, and he entrusts in us human to carry in the church of God. That is mind-boggling. How can that be? How can that be? And then revert back to who God is and revert back to the grace of God. That's what it is. So the three point, number one, salvation. Number two, the nature of God, the triune God. Number three, the topic of the church of God. So point number one, we see clearly, as verse eight, clearly said that we have been saved. We have been saved, an ongoing perfect time. We have been saved. Specifically talk about an ongoing present time forever. And almost like there's no beginning but to us humans, there's a beginning of our salvation. But this is amazing in God's timeline and perspective and power and nature and economy. God saved us before the foundation of the world, in which Ephesians talk about that as well in chapter 1. But here, let's talk about perfect completion. The perfect tense in a part of speaking English grammar is sound comfortably acceptable to my little mind, that perfect tense. Yes, perfect tense. We have been saved. Passive voice, not active. We've been saved by the power of God, by the grace of God, by whatever it is. It's done by other than ourselves. We have been saved. Salvation is precious. But this precious salvation, secure, encompass so large beyond our understanding and imagination borrow the term eternal past, eternal future, um, you know, mathematical concept. We can just say that, but we don't really understand that completely. However, it's good enough for now. We've been saved through faith, through faith. It's involved faith. An act of faith, yet it's not an active or source or doing from a self, a human sinner, dead soul. That's a complex in there, but don't worry. Don't worry. We will go through that in the future. All of that. Because it is by grace. Because it is by grace, there is encompass our salvation, our faith, all of that. If there was a, you've been, you have been saved through faith, that would be so scary. So scary. What are we going to say? There's no thing between Christianity and any religion in the world. But there are salvation concepts, there are heaven and hell, there are things, not everybody has it, but this concept of good and evil and result in heaven and hell, whatever. But there's no topic of grace was given to individual who practice any other religion than the pure Christianity. So the grace of God that saves us, give us faith, 
in which we've been saved through that faith, not by that faith, but through the faith. And the faith itself is not even of our own doing. You know, with that faith, that the salvation go through it, go through it, not by it. It's not even our own, but by grace. The flywheel, the power, the energy, the life source, the protector, the avenger, everything that we been saved through that faith. And that faith is not. That faith is that it's not of yourself or salvation or the grace. Any one of them you may like. The point is, it's nothing of ourselves, our doing. To get us faith, to get us saved, to get us grace. Otherwise, grace cannot be grace if you do something to get grace. So, put that to rest. It is not our own doing. Paul put this in a negative context, negative sense, to defend something strongly instead of positive. He put positive later. It is the gift of God. It could have been. I'm not trying to be nitpicky here. But it could have been. And it is a gift of God, not of your own doing. He could have said that too. But, but most importantly, he hit the nail, hit the point that we all, human beings, arrogantly, pridefully, and sinfully grab it. Grab it first. And Paul knew that it's important to just put it out. Put that out. It's not of your own doing. Do nothing of one ounce, one sense that you doing anything to be saved. That's why verse 9, devoted to that whole point. Not a result of works. Not a result of work. Not of what your own doing. Why? Because human nature, you and I know that, that we are so prideful, so, so arrogant. And we'll talk about that later. Arrogant comes from a different form. You feel like you earn something, you feel like you are better, and, uh, whatever it is, and that seep in. Arrogant is a source, pride is a source of all sin. You know the story. You know the sin of mankind, disobedience. On why? Because we were so arrogant, so prideful, not to respect, not to obey. And now, you know, you know that children are not adult. We have a hard time. We try hard to obey. We never try hard to disobey. We never try. It's come natural. Sad to say it is. The only difference is, by the grace of God, we've been saved. We have faith. We have salvation. We have the grace of God that carries through. Otherwise, it's no different. Children, adult, from the past to the future. But one thing I want to say, both, both for character and nature come many different ways. And action and word and arrogance and eyes and look and thinking. I'm not talking about if you are a leader, if you're a king, or you're a president, you're a commander, you have to command, you have to order. It's different, for, different from being prideful and arrogant. Even a slave, the bottom bro, still have pride and still be arrogant about who he or she is. So that's deadly. The mother of all sin, the most deadly sin, is pride. Pride become, come before destruction. Lucifer became prideful, arrogant of his look, and his ability, and his strength, and his glory became the worst creature ever exists in the whole universe, Satan. The most ugliest, the most horrible character ever. And whoever, all of us, follow the father of this earth, the god of this age, Lucifer, Satan, has no different than him in a nature of prideful and arrogant and evil. Evil came from that. So, salvation, grace, and faith 
It's a detox to all of that. I know, I know, you and I say, can we just get one button to destroy it all? It is. Positionally, forensically, we have that one button from God, the grace of God washed that away in the blood of Christ. But the unfortunate thing is we stuck, uh, more to call for this, the sin, the flesh, the flesh, our flesh, our sin stuck with us. We don't, we're not stuck with them. They, those things stuck in us. So we have to deal with it until the end. However, the grace of God carries us through. Obey, fear, look for, look forward to the arrival of Jesus Christ or the day that we die. It's sweet. It's, it's so sweet when we leave this flesh. So salvation is amazing blessing, grace, gift from God that we should not boast. And when we say, I never boast about salvation, oh good. I'm a Christian, I'm most about everything I have. Only, is that better? Oh yeah, way better. You wanna know people who boast for, just first time of the day or we, first time, not first time with me, um, we get together and, and watch who's saying, who start talking. And sometimes you somebody gotta start, right? <laughs> yeah, that's fine, then don't pick on But what the topic was to start talking about? One, talk first, talk fast, talk forever, and two, talk about themselves. Oh man, oh boy. How about those who didn't talk? Those who didn't talk doesn't mean they escaped that. What matter is in their mind, and their silent, and their, their thought. Boastful is a core nature of human, core nature of Satan, core nature of sin. And the boast about salvation, or the boast about, about anything, especially salvation, is the direct, direct rebellious spirit toward the one who bleed, who bled to die on a cross shamefully, sacrifice everything to save us and we still boast about our salvation. That is beyond help unless God grace pour upon individual, all of us. So that one, I'm gonna move through quickly because our time is up already. Two, point number two, we see the character of God in this passage. And we even see the Holy Spirit um, I mean the, tr the triune God. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit is hard to see. I'm not trying to bend it and make it work. No, no. <laughs> but it's not as easy. God the Father is obvious. It's a gift from God. The grace, the faith. Talk about God the Father gave us this. Great. However, God the Son, is also included in the work of salvation, in the work of our faith, in the work of our, in the gift from God's grace. I'll show you why, how, it's just beautiful. To me it's fantastic, amazing, something I am so thrilled with. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship. The word workmanship alone, the Greek word, is just so cool. For example, verse 9, go back to verse 9 a little bit. Not as a result of work, that work is argon. Argon, the argon means work. You know, your own doing, verse 9, verse 8, and verse 9, your work is argon. Verse 10, Paul switch is no longer argon, it is workmanship. English word, Carrie did a good job. The translator did a good job to depict the true meaning. Workmanship in Greek is poi, poi, poiema, poiema, poiema. This is not just a work, a result, a work. This is 
it carry a deeper connotation to the work of art, to the masterpiece, to the workmanship. What's the different? It's different. A man make a chair. He has a skill or no skill. I can make a chair. I no problem. I have a problem after that. But to me, no problem. Make a thing that you can sit on. If you have a chair, this is a side point. Do a research on the history and philosophy of chair or a knife. I love make um, do study on on object. Tool, knife, chair, something like that. I can make chair, I can make knife too. Okay, you understand why? I can get a piece of lock and chop it and, you know, saw it, whatever. It's the easiest one and no leg, not, not, no, no tool involved. I mean, no, um, no, uh, what's it called? No hardware involved, just a block of thing and you can sit on. That's a got a chair right there. But different from a man, a carpenter, a skilled carpenter who did not just make a block of wood, but he made a chair. A chair that start from chair have, you know, seat and legs and hand rest and back support. And then later on, he start to decorate, carve and paint. And, and later on, it go deeper and higher and bigger and better and then became a throne. That throne is totally different from this block of wood that there I sit on. I made. Because I just work on this, this man or this side and this object and this point here is a workmanship. It's a masterpiece. It's an honor, the object of honor and, uh, and adored and respect. Not worship, of course. So it's two different things. Paul said, you do not make a block of your salvation, but God have you as a masterpiece. Wow. Poe Ima. I don't know, it sounds like, I don't know, I can I don't. But again, I'm no Greek scholar or anything. It sounds like I'm speaking Chinese. Poe Ima. <laughs> Forgive me for that. You cannot save yourself. You cannot do anything. It's a gift from God. And no longer talk about salvation or talk about your soul. Your, talk about you are his masterpiece. You are his workmanship. Whoa. This is king. Game change drastically, completely, and heavenly. You are his workmanship. God, personally, by his own might and power and world, make you and me who we are. Now we talk about, we change from a saved sinner to a plural group of people introduce the, con, the topic of a church now. An individual, personally, but all of you. I'm not pushing, I'm not stretching to make it sound like, okay, salvation and God in church. Not that. It is true. Watch it. As we go through this, but more intricate, more beautiful context and concept and beautiful details in this is a trinity, which is a point number two. And mixed with the point number three already, the church of God. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. A little labor in life take a toll of my <coughs> voice and everything. <coughs> God, he himself, read this way. God, he himself made us. God, he himself produced a masterpiece his own masterpiece. We are. <laughs> I know it sounds funny. The Greek can say that, all of that. This is even beautiful more than that security, that beauty of the masterpiece by God's own hand, especially the word beauty and security, is created in Christ Jesus, created in Christos, Yeshua, 
creating the Messiah, Savior. Not Jesus Christ, but Christ Jesus. Even that order of word, it just purposely tell us something about our new creation, new nature as a masterpiece by God's own hand, new individually and corporate as the body of church of God, of body of Christ in the church of God. Yeah, you know, God that. Not only God made it with his own hand, created the masterpiece, not the result of work, but the result of his design. I just imagine he's just like putting my little mind. He was sitting there, borrow the human point. He's sitting there carving and making his smile. He said, you know how you and I, when we do something, while we do something, it's coming out, you smile. Or maybe you don't smile. I don't know, I'm just kidding. You smile, you feel joyful, you're happy. And people say, why are you smiling? I wasn't happy, why are you laughing? Oh, nothing, uh, you know? Or some people do smile without making anything either. They sit there and smile too, but it's a different story. But this is, he was making something, he's doing something, he smiled. He, he's so happy about that. He, he happy with his own creation, his own power. But he happy with the object, with the masterpiece, with the workmanship that produced. He, he loved that. He loved that. He loved them. He loved us. And that's how loving, how caring, how related, uh, not related, how intimate he relates to us which opened the door for us to, to be related, to relate to him as well. Relationship. Workmanship is a relationship between the master and the resolve. There's so much more. The only thing that carried me through when I am so dark, deep, and frustrated and sin and, and life I look at this verse, I have hope. For example, you know, a schedule here and there throw me off and then and try everything I try my best. I can, cannot control my mind, my body, and so on, and try to sleep, cannot fall asleep, and sleep in the wrong time because I'm tired, and then time to go to sleep, cannot sleep. And it's like, what's going on? How can I not press a button? I cannot do that. Unfortunately, I'm cursed my, by nature, uh, individual person. I am not that kind of easy person to close the eyes and go, I can't do that, sorry. Go, snoring, yeah, that's too drastic, yeah. That sounds like you. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's just not easy. It's sad. I can't, this is so bad. But, I think of this, one day all this problem gone because I am the masterpiece. I'm the piece that God created among the whole. There's something to look forward. Something to dream, to wish, to long for. What is your long for this day? I don't know. All of us have. I'm not saying you shouldn't. You don't have. I do. <laughs> I, I know, silly. I long for uh, many things that I, I don't know how I'll do. And I get older and older and older now. Simple thing like I just dream. Small thing. To walk. Shot sheep. A dog. My dog. Now, um, just do it. <laughs> okay, do it. <laughs> I just when I get to do it, I'm tired. And I long to do bushcraft. What is that? It's not which. No, it's nothing to do. Some like bushcraft, bushcraft. No, just knife and do woodwork. And I'm nobody close to that. But I like. I like one day to, uh, to go fishing. To walk with. Go back to the dog. Walk with a dog in a field without um, a leash and something to free them with walk with a dog in the wood or at the beach in the water and let she go in the water and so on and stuff. It's just a beautiful thing, but I don't know where I will get to do it. But those are small things. Those longing is small thing, but longing 
to be a complete, not only position, but reality of God workmanship is something that we all should, by the grace of God, focus on. Not, I long to go off road, I got, um, you know, I'm not picking on anybody, but it's like, I got this four wheel thing, I wanna go off road, but I don't wanna get dirty. Oh, what is that gonna do? I'm joking, I'm joking, okay? I'm teasing you. And don't start walking out crying. Joking, I'm still joking. Okay, go back. <laughs> as a Christian, as a result of God, designed individually and as a whole body of Christ, I feel like life is bearable. Looking the wrong way in human perspective is unbearable. Let me borrow the strong word, I hate it. I hate it so much. Not hateful, but just hate it. But looking at the right perspective to the future in God economy, God design, God program, and God church, I have something to look for. And in the middle of all this stress and all this whatever, the body, the mind, the spirit, I look forward to the worshiping God, to worship God, to look, worshiping God, going to church, preaching and teaching and fellowshipping. And those are the things that bless my soul. Bless my soul personally. I'm not pushing on anybody, but I do hope that's on you too. Because God created us in Christ, not only Him alone, but in His Son. To talk about two things here. One security, one precious security and honor and position that God made us in Christ. Who are we to be in Christ? Christ in us. We can't even sit with someone who of high um, rank or lofty or education or look or wealth. Nobody. One has to sit next to them unless we are that kind. And who are we to sit next to those people? Absolutely not real. We not only sit with Christ, Christ sit with us, he's in us, we in him. Mind-boggling that I should be associate that alone he's in me, me in him. That is absolutely incredible. It was not so. Paul and the Bible would not have stood the test of time. They wouldn't start saying things like that unless it is given to him by the Spirit and true. In reality, you and I know that although we struggle in life, we see the future. We see the hope. We see the result. Because not only a security, and privilege, not only that. Also, it showed the relationship between the Father and the Son. I know point number two show that. Salvation, security, yes, but now show between God and Jesus, the Father and the Son. Jesus, oh wait, God the Father, Yahweh, could, should, can easily, no question that he could have done this alone, no problem. No problem. After all, he is a creator, the God of creator, the God of maker, the, the, the maker of everything, the owner of everything, the source of everything. He can easily make it, but the relationship between the Father and Son is so beautiful, they make us together. They create us together. They take care of us together. They protect us together in Christ. One is the security in God's hand, God made, and two in Christ, that's security, double. But this, the relationship, the power, the, the unity, the triune God making us together create us, us as masterpiece with Jesus. But where is the Holy Spirit? He's holy and His Spirit, you cannot see it? Of course not. No, I'm joking. We'll see you soon. But on us, for us, because of this point of God so caring, so loving, and so united in themselves, result is 
are we the workmanship, we the art the church, we individual possess good works in the future from now on. Let's go to the church. The third point, the church. Although we do not do work to earn salvation, but now that we say we do good works. You see that? Okay, one more time. That none of us by our works should one anyone should boast. It's all by grace through faith is saved. Not of work, not of our doing, not of our gun, but by Emma, by the workmanship of God, we will do the Argons. Our God, is that the Lord of the Ring? Something like that. Sounds like something like that. As much as we don't do good work to save ourselves or earn salvation, now that we have salvation, we do good work. Beautiful. Where do we do good work? Eventually, you and I grow to know our duties. Personally and corporate, as a body, as a family, as a business, as a church, we do good work together. I love it. I cannot say enough. I cannot say enough. Praise God. Thank God. And the little mind is a human being right now as a father, as a, as a um, little business owner and so on. I see how people, especially the family, not so much as employee, I, I appreciate good employee, but to see family work together. I Put it this way in the Cambodian concept, I can die with my eye closed. I can live in peace to see how the children, how the family, how the sibling are working together, do good works together as a unity that built in this system. I cannot say enough to see my children actually, actually, that is not bad. My children, even, no, wait, put it, my children have at the age of working, real work, even the little one. Real work, labor, child labor, yeah. <laughs> don't say anything, well, don't, they come and arrest me. Now we call it exercise, we call it kung fu. We kung fu with sandwich. <laughs> Good work. Work together. Understand that? That is the heart of a father or mother or parents or brothers or sibling. Um, to see everybody work flawlessly flow. I cannot start to highlight individual because it's so much. So much is so mature to take care of businesses if that person is the um, uh, a mature um, owner, a manager all their life. It seems like, wow, so mature. And labor, hard beyond human understanding and strength. And their condition, each one of them, they are so funny. Well, the word I'm funny. They are so special <laughs> in their own each other, but they produce so amazing work. Some even pregnant. Oh, there's something wrong with pregnant. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> But a pregnant person, in general, I'm not abusing pregnant or child abuse or pregnant abuse either, but they're all pitching and work hard. Oh boy, I cannot use the word to express how I am humbly grateful. Amazing. Nobody worked to death, but close, okay? <laughs> That's another thing we need to talk about our family business and meeting soon. But you understand the privilege to work. God created us to work. God said, work. Work in a garden. Oh, I would do anything. Well, of course, to go to heaven. But if not that, I would do anything to go back to Eden to work in the garden. Oh, I tell you, I would get up before dawn to go to work. I still do that, <laughs> the living savage. <laughs> but I would get up in the garden, walk around to work in a garden, nothing to work because everything's perfect, and pick ripe mangoes, you know, papaya, whatever, before 
the thieves steal it or whatever. But I would love to work for my God, for my God's garden, for my God's garden. And God said, don't worry, don't worry. Do now, get up, 4.30, go do some work. Okay. It's only God, can you make it, the boxes lighter? <laughs> 80 pounds? In a hundred thousand million bucks. I feel like I, I calculated the other day with some part of my family member. It was like about 1,200 pounds. Okay, God, can you make it a little lighter each box? But no, this is your lot. This is your lot or your box. You gotta carry this, okay? It's a good work? Yeah, a good work. So you understand? God created us to do good work for Him. For Him. Wow, what a privilege to be from a sinner, converted, blessed, put in a body, and continue good work. What does that mean here? It means the church of God is a place that God accomplished his mission. Divine mission, divine creation, divine source. Now mortal, like you and I, which is nobody but sinners rotten to hell. But God saved and God gave us not only salvation, but he gives us privilege to join him, join venture, and to be, put it this way, to finish up work for him. Wow, that's mind-boggling. We ought to do good work. This good work is not about, yeah, behavior and so on, but this good work is the good works that God had prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Where do we get that? In the church of God, in the salvation of individual, in the salvation house of God, the church of God, in the workmanship of God. I am humble beyond description from who I am, what I am, who you all are, should have been in hell in a different reason, different degree, but end up in hell together. But by the grace, pick some of us up, save us, and then reveal himself who he is, the triune God, where's the Holy Spirit again, and then put us in the church of God, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, it's a beautiful masterpiece in Christ to do good work, which he prepared for us to walk in them. See? Mission. Mission that we take on. Mission that accomplished in Jesus already. Mission that the good work. The Greek have good in look, beauty, and good in function, and good in nature. With or without talking about function, with or without look, it's good in itself. Do I talk about that good works? And only God and God alone should do, can do. But He prepared that for us to do. That is higher than higher thinking than I can imagine or grasp. Why should I involve in God's mission flawlessly? I just get in the way. You will get in the way. But because, again, the love of a father, that is grace beyond grace and grace. The father who loved his baby, his children, his daughter, his son, could have done making this amazing masterpiece. But with loving, strong, arm and hands and warm heart surrounding this little baby holding hand left and right put up with messing up but protect love hovering and guide and patient forgive and fix fixing a lot and work together to get this masterpiece done and once it's done perfectly done accomplished, finished, the same love and warm protection and correction pull back the image of one person here and look at each other 
and smile and say, look what we done, son. Look at this. And you look at him and say, yeah, beautiful. And beyond that, I can't imagine. I would dream that I can do that. Thank you for helping me. Oh, no problem. No worries. You, me, walk in the work that God had prepared beforehand to finish? Wow. We do the work of God in the church of God. There's no other way to describe from beginning salvation to getting to know him. He allows us to know him, reveal himself to know him. As he knows us, no problem, but we get to know him. We belong to him, he belongs to us. And then to finish the job, finish the work. Those three points in this passage is beginning of a journey from this season on. 10 days over a month or so, spring is here, March 20th. I'm big on spring, summer, especially fall and stuff like that. But anyway, the point is 2019 is a journey of carrying the mission that God gave us to accomplish. This accomplished the work of God is to honor God, to take care of one another, and to bring the gospel news, the news, the good news to the lost soul. That's the work of God. That's the work that God put in our hand to accomplish. To ultimately worship God, to take care of one another, love, protect, correct, discipline, patient, all of that. But thirdly, to share that blessing, that love, that grace, that revelation, that God's revelation, that hope, that joy, that opportunity with others. So they too, so they too, ultimately worship our God, ultimately come and join us to take care of one another. They too can continue to spread that gospel if God so choose if we obey God. Join hand, this is joint venture to go and give the gospel. One more time, can God do that alone? Of course, can God? No, but God love us. As much as God doing this with Jesus, that is so putting us in the same class. And that's so scary to say, almost blasphemy. God created us in Christ and God put us Within that nature in Christ, God put us to do work with him and Jesus, to do work throughout eternity from now on. So your position, my position as a masterpiece, as a workmanship, as a saved individual by the grace of God through our faith, it's not a small thing. Amazing, amazing grace. And then, we, glorify him, we take care of one another, we spread the gospel and cycle through again and again and again throughout history, throughout eternity. And then look at our problem, daily problem, struggle, sin. We still have. But with these three points, you know we can make it. That's it, Dave. Let's pray together. Lord, not to us, but to your name, give glory for your loving kindness and your truth. We thank you for the truth this morning, Lord, that you, that you give grace, that we are not saved by our works, no one was ever saved by their works. Lord, we have been given the gift of salvation 
It was your plan. It was your execution, Lord. And Lord, we thank you that we have received this grace upon grace. We thank you that this is clearly not the work of man, but it's the work of you, our triune God. That you leave us without anything to boast of except to boast in you. We have nothing to boast in in our salvation. We have nothing to boast in in the works that we do. Even those have been prepared from beforehand by you, Lord, and they are works. And Lord, we are your work, your workmanship. Lord, that you created us in Christ Lord, to, to perform these works that you've prepared for us. We thank you that they are good works by your definition, not by ours. We thank you, O oh Lord, that this is carried out in the power of your spirit. Amen. We thank you, O oh Lord, that this is not something that we have to come up with, that we have to scatter and find, Lord, but this is something, Lord, that you have given to us. And Lord, may we see the work that you have prepared, and Lord, may we do it diligently with all of our heart, knowing, Lord, that this is our act of worship to you. Yes. We thank you so much that you've created these good works, Lord, so that we could walk in them, Lord. And Lord, help us to walk in a manner worthy of the gospel with which we've been called. Yes. In light of your gracious calling, in light of you, the giver of grace, may we live our lives and do our works in every way and in everything, Lord, in such a way that we bring you glory. And Lord, we thank you. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this doctrinal series on the church, Lord. Thank you for helping us and opening our eyes to understand who we are, who we've been called by, who empowers us, Lord, and, and to whom we have glory. So, Lord, we give you all the praise and we thank you. Lord, please strengthen our hands for, for the works that you've, you have for us. Thank you for this body. Please bless the believers here and yeah, believers across the world who are laboring along with us. Thank you, O oh Lord, for those souls who are not able to make it today. Mm. Lord, may they be blessed. Lord, may we extend the blessing of, of this message, this sermon, these scriptures, Lord, with them yes, and build up one another. Mm. Thank you, O oh Lord. We, we go... Uh, much more full, much more joyful, Lord, knowing, Lord, that we've been instructed by you. Thank you, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Here we go in the grace of God.